Okay guys, three's a charm. This is Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. This is my third attempt. I'm, I'm talking profound things this morning and, and I think the enemy is fighting me because I am in the big city here. I am in Spokane, Washington. I had full bars and totally hung up and lost my connection. So anyway, as I was saying, when we go through hard times, you know, we need to we need to settle in and and learn to handle the newfound circumstances. We need to roll with our circumstances when there, we are going through things that we cannot change and we cannot alter. We need to find peace in those circumstances. And for me, that did bring me to my knees. It did it did bring me to great tears. That uh, I, the strong person and woman, that uh, was very independent and enjoyed being strong and being able to do homestead things, you know, I was lifting 80 pounds on a weight bench, uh, just to strength train, and went from being able to lift that to not even being able to lift a canning jar that was half full of oatmeal. So, it was a very quick process, and it did bring me to my knees, and it did bring me to tears, but there was purpose in that, and, and that was learning to allow others to help me. It was uh, learning that the things on my to-do list were near as important as I thought they were. It was learning that life goes on and that I am placed where I am to slow down. And it, it can be a, a hard thing to learn to find peace in that. And oftentimes what happens is people will be in that spot and they will tremendously beat themselves up. Good morning, Charlotte. And, and they will just be in a very miserable state while they're in this newfound place. And, and whether it's health, whether it's financial, uh, whether it's relationship, uh, loss of somebody, where, whatever, whatever the unexpected is in your life, we have the choice every day to decide how to act and react to everything. And I have always chosen to find the, the shiny penny in all my circumstances. And as I shared earlier, you know, when we would go through rough times on the homestead and things would be breaking and everything was falling apart, I'd, I'd stand there laughing and my husband would just want to strangle me because it wasn't funny. And it wasn't by any means funny to him. But, you know, you learn how to handle your circumstances. You can either laugh or you can cry. You can settle in or you can fight it. And my husband is learning to laugh because there are certain circumstances in our life that we just can't change. And we have no control over. Hi, Deb. Hi, Rachel. I'm sorry this has been painful. Hang on. I'm merging into traffic here. Yeehaw. Okay, sorry. Um, so, when you learn to rest in your circumstances, find peace in your circumstances, find the shiny penny when everything is falling apart, your life will be so much happier. Sometimes your to-do list, like mine did, it was long and it got thrown to the curb because everything went out from under us. And... I was, I was a breadwinner, guys, and I ended up flat on my back with major, major brain fog. I couldn't get in a comfortable position for months because my abdominal area was so swollen, and I wasn't able to do what I normally did, and, and I did beat myself up in the beginning, and it's not a good place to be. That negative spot and that negativity just breeds negativity, so... The sooner you can get yourself out of that spot, the better off you are. And because of our circumstances, my husband was having to care for me, and we ended up going six and a half months without an income. It was really the absolute hardest thing we've ever gone through, because I almost lost my life to the illness. But the crazy thing is, it was the, one of the most amazing times in my life, where I saw God's hand at work so closely and so amazingly through circumstances, through people, 
it was it was just beyond amazing so God takes us to these and, and I was starting to say earlier when it froze up on me that God doesn't always doesn't bring negative things into our life God brings positive things into our life the enemy brings negative things into our life so first of all you got to establish that and you got to be aware because guys there is a big thing called spiritual warfare and and that is something that when there's negativity brewing, when there's conflict in your home, when there's bad things happening, when you start to realize where that's coming from and kick it to the curb, everything turns around. And God brings the good in your life. And God uses the negative circumstances in our lives, such as my illness, to bring good. He uses that to help us grow. I think it's James 1-3, if I'm not mistaken, where it states that in those troubled times, God uses that to strengthen us and to create perseverance. He's creating warriors, guys. When we make it through these valleys, we head into the most amazing new places. And, and we're going to keep hitting those spots. I want to encourage you before I lose you again. Hopefully I won't. But uh, my friend Chad shared an amazing sermon with me last week. And I think it is so extremely worth sharing. It, you can find it quickly by going to treyerwilderness.com slash sour patches and sweet spots. I will put that in the um, description later when I'm off the road. But that sermon is really good. If you guys are going through bad spots, low spots, and you know what? Regardless if you're not, it's worth listening to because it will give you some insight for when you are going through them. But none of us are void of those circumstances. I have a very dear friend whose life was turned upside down for quite a few years while she cared for her mother and and we have to roll through those circumstances. We grow and we come out of those circumstances and we all we all go through them. The thing is we can build each other up, help each other through these things. But the thing is, we've got to show ourselves grace, and we've got to show ourselves kindness. And when you start talking negative things, um, you know, Jill, this is for you. One of the things that I started hearing myself saying is that I'm useless, I have no purpose. You know, that's so not true. I might be in a slow spot, I might not be able to do the things that I used to be able to do. But it's, it's a growth spot, and I'm here for a reason, and I'm going to learn things through it. And if you take on that mentality that you're going to learn something through this journey, through this spot you're in, you'll come out the other side richer and stronger. And a lot of times we put so much precedence on our to-do list and our stuff that we fill our day with and we let it rule us to such a degree that when those things do happen, we feel useless. And we need to feel strong in ourselves for who we are, not because of what we do. And that is something that not too many people think of. And I think you think of those things when you are really put into those positions. And I think that is what uh, got me the most was that, you know, I am not my to-do list. I am not my schedule. I am not what I fill my day with. I am so much more than that. And we need we need to realize that. And sometimes too we fill our, our schedules so full of things to make us feel important uh, because we're we're missing something in our lives and it's just a, a process we need to go through. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, for me, I felt like I was broken down. When I was in that process, I was slowly being chipped away to what I was supposed to become because maybe I was using all of those tools to empower me in ways that I didn't really need to. Um, or just uh, maybe that was something I needed to feel useful where I found that I was more useful in other ways. And... I hope this is making sense and I hope I'm not rambling on and on. How many of you guys have gone through rough spots and have found peace in those spots? And have you seen miracles in those spots? Because something else that happens in those spots is that we get to 
we get broken down and we hit a point where it's us and that quiet spot and in that quiet spot is where God can really communicate with us and speak with us and that's what transpired for me so I would love to hear your feedback and I am concentrating here I'm on a four lane highway so I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything while I'm talking to you guys but that sermon that I mentioned it's an hour long almost an hour long and it's it's worth the time to listen to it even if you have to break it up and Chad thank you for sharing that <laughs> Chad said yes but I'm still in it that's okay Chad so are we we are going through a spot right now too and I think I said it before I'm not sure if in this video or one of the other two but you know when you're in spots that you can't control whether it's illness, whether it's financial, whether it's sometimes waiting on other people to go through their rough spots. Um, you know, if it's something that we can't change and it's something that we can't control, if we just learn through those circumstances to show grace and be the best that we can be and be good to ourselves and focus each day, even if it's one minute at a time, and doing small tasks to make it through those hard times, you'll make it through. You know, when we go through those hard times and you don't do that, you get stuck in the, de in a, in the negative, you get stuck in the depressing side of things and it can really pull you in. What sermon are you talking about? Oh, Chad, I, right before you got on, I started sharing um, about the uh, sour patches and sweet spots and provided a quick link to be able to um, listen to it. And it's treyerwilderness.com slash sour patches and sweet spots. Yeah, Deb, good deal. I just, I share what I feel led to share. And again, this one was, was requested, but it's something that's always on my heart because I learned so much going through the spot that I went through. And like I said, it was one of the roughest times of my life, but it was one of the most rewarding and one of the most awing times in my life to be able to uh, experience the things I experienced. And when we are put in those spots where we are out of, it's out of our control, which is hard for all of us. And I think that's something to point out. When we are in a spot where we are no longer in control, it's very hard. We all struggle with that because we want control. And sometimes we need to be taken to a place where there is no control and that we are being guided and we are being forced to trust. That was the biggest lesson I got is that I was being forced to trust. Angela says sometimes close family members judge when your health is not the best and you slow down because of it. This is very true, Angela. And I actually, through that process, had to walk away from two of the most important people in my life to get peace from that situation so that I could heal and remove myself from the stress. Um, it, is, it is true. And that is something when you're in that spot and you're struggling with that spot is that you can pray that God shows those people um, what it's really like when you're going through chronic illness and like with my illness I look like I'm fine last week. I took the mountain boy to the airport. It was a stressful week I drove from 3 30 a.m. In the morning until 11 30 in the morning in snow on dicey roads and it overly stressed my body I felt fine, but when I got home I was so exhausted and I was exhausted for two days that I was totally dysfunctional and ended up flat on my back and got sick uh, because of it. So, although I look good, I still have issues that's, that pop up and it can be really hard because people don't see. They see the outside and not the inside. And um, I totally sympathize with you, Angela. I totally sympathize. It's very hard. And I will keep you in my prayers and I will also, um, you know, when you're in that spot, pray that people can, can understand and, and that they, they see and give you grace because a lot of situations like that is what happens. Even the doctors say, you know, there's, it's, it's in your head, but 
I, I choose to put a smile on with every outfit. So if I wake up and I feel like crap, I still smile and I deceive people. And But I refuse, I refuse to go through my day feeling miserable and, and feeding my illness. I want to beat my illness. So it, it's how we cope and it's how we handle it. And learning to disregard other people is, is sometimes necessary and you need to do that. And one of the things that you need to do when you're going through these circumstances is trust like nobody's business. I'm going to share something with you. During my illness, I hit a point where I felt like I was numb. Like, almost like I gave up caring about things. And then what I realized was that it wasn't that at all. It's that my trust and my faith had grown so incredibly strong that I didn't fear things anymore. And that I... I didn't, it wasn't that I was numb and that I didn't care, it's that I had such faith and trust in God to get me through my circumstances that I didn't think about it. How awesome is that? That is such a place to be. Who needs prayer? Yes, Chad is asking if anybody needs prayer. Chad is one of my prayer warriors. He is amazing and he will pray his heart out for you. So if you need prayer, you say the word. Good word, smile, pray, trust God. Amen, Angela. Amen. And when you hit and, and the, when you hit that spot where you're trusting that much and your faith is that strong, you will find peace and comfort in every spot you go through. Honestly, guys, this is going to sound ludicrous and crazy, but I look forward to my my um, rough spots, my rough patches, my sour patches. I look forward to them because I know I'm going to grow through them and I know that there is a reason for me to go through them. And sometimes it may not be for me. It may be that while I am going through that rough spot, somebody is going to gain something through watching me boldly shoulder through it. And, and that's what we got to remember is that when we are walking the walk and talking the talk, people are seeing and people are going to want what you got. If you can go through that rough spot with a smile, they want to know what you have. And that's where I got to. And, and I want, I want to keep up with my schedule just like anybody else. But when you go through a rough spot, you got to be showing yourself grace. You got to be trusting like there's nobody's business and you got to be able to realize what's most important in those spots. And if it's, if it's, you know, the option of improving your health compared to, um, keeping up with the to-do list, you've got to make that choice. And that's, that's where I was. And I have to say that I'm, I'm happy with how we came through things. And the more you focus on God, you know, I can't express that enough. And I'm not trying to shove that down anybody's throat, but God is my rock. And I have gotten through so many things through his grace. So, you know, we, we will jump back to our schedules. We'll be able to continue doing what we need to do when we're able. Um, and sometimes we need to take, take rest in that. Showing yourself grace is really tough. We're generally our own worst critic. Very much so, Patty, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, we need to be able to... We need to be able to show ourselves grace. We need to be able to show ourselves better kindness than we show anybody else because we are the ones that are having to hoof through the storm. And uh, it's just, it is, it is hard. But when you, when you catch yourself saying negative things to yourself, you need to learn to turn them around. And you need to learn to hear them and be willing to hear them and realize that what you're saying to yourself is wrong. I can't get out of bed in the morning without praying first. I need that connection to find the strength. Amen. That's just it. And I, I left the house this morning without being able to do my devotions. And, you know, I felt like there was something missing. And I have a Bible app so I can listen to it when I'm driving, which I will do later. Um, I, I felt it on my heart today to share this with you guys first. And um, if you get a chance to, I would encourage you guys to check out our YouTube channel. I am very proud of my husband. He has been doing some really cool um, inspirational videos. He's been doing them from, started doing them from the trap line. Um, I did one yesterday from my office. And, you know, we are, we are feeling led to share certain things. 
and when they're on our hearts, you know, we want to try to help other people through their circumstances because we're not alone. We're all surfing this stuff together and we're all going to be going through the ups and downs and, and I, I feel for all the sad and hurting people in this world that may be by themselves or not have the coping mechanisms that, that I might have been blessed to have. And um, Rachel says, so true about the negative words. Then we get into the negative pit so deep and feels impossible to crawl out and so thankful for the feelings aren't fact. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's just it. You know, I am blessed to have prayer warriors. I am, I am blessed to have good friends and good communication with my husband that when we get in these spots we can help each other out of them. Um, I am blessed too that through my circumstances I have realized that the enemy will use all kinds of little things to toy with us and try to keep us in that pit, to keep pulling us down. And self-empowerment can be hard, but when you learn how to find your sources of that empowerment, whether it's reading the Bible, whether it's listening to a podcast, whether it's asking a friend for prayer, but learn how, what works for you, what helps you get out of those places, what helps you get out of those pits, what helps you to, um, what is that, that cord hanging down that you can pull yourself out of the pit. Finding those things is important. And I, my hope and prayer is that this year through these pod, live videos, podcasts, everything that we're doing, that we provide some of that for you guys because we're all in this together. We are not any different than you guys. You know, we, we get in those things. I get, I get empowered and I go through my week and I am so empowered and all of a sudden there's this negative rut and it's like, it's like a wall and, and I know how to get myself out of it, even though it's sometimes a struggle, but I think of those that don't and I want to share what works for me so that maybe that might be something that'll work for you. I know what it's like to be sick. I know what it's like to be struggling. And and the biggest two key things that I can give you today are to trust and and lean in. And this is what I want to tell you to learn to do. You're going to you're going to lean in and you're going to hang on. Because the other side will be so much better. And the other thing is to Listen to what you're saying to yourself. Be kind to yourself. When you catch yourself being negative, be kind. And find those things that give you empowerment and help you to remove yourself from those places that you're in because you, you don't want to stay there. It's not a pretty place, and the enemy is the only one wanting you there. So, you know, that's why it's important to lean in and to trust. And, and it was a scary place for me when I, when I thought that I had just grown numb to life, when really it was just that I was so faithful and so trusting that I, uh, it was a weird feeling. It really, really was. The enemy wants you to listen to his lies. He's the father of lies. Press into Jesus. Amen. That's what it's about. And, and guys, you are all strong, wonderful, powerful, beautiful people. And I want you to remember that in when everything is going crazy for you and, and you're in that spot and, and pull yourself out. Write yourself little notes. Like I, I think I showed you the other week in my office. I've got little notes on my chalkboard. Write yourself notes. If you find yourself saying something over and over again that's negative, turn it around and make it present. Make it a positive presence in your life so that you see it all the time and you start listening to that instead of what the enemy is trying to get you to listen to. So... I have a guy sitting over here in front of me in a pickup truck, and he is just hysterically laughing at me. <laughs> he must think that I am having one full-blown conversation with myself. It's great. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> guys, do you have anything you'd like to share, any requests, any questions? Because I'm going to probably jump off here soon. I'm not sure what time it is, but... I need to pick up Mountain Ben before too awful long here. I'm excited to have him back. And Rachel, thank you for sharing him with me. And um, I'm sorry that this was so painful that we had to make three efforts, but the, I think the enemy was fighting me. It was really funny back there. I was saying something about the enemy and the screen froze. Oh, thank you, Patty. Uh, I, I want to be a light. I want to be a disciple. I, I want to I wanna share what I know. I want to share what he shares with me. And, uh, and I want us all to grow together this year. We are all living with intention. We are going to be true to ourselves. And we are going to be true to Jesus. 
<laughs> thank you, Rachel. And you're welcome, Angela. I'm glad to have you. And guys, thank you so much for taking your time with me today. Your time is just as valuable as mine. So let's grow together. <laughs> Let's just grow together. Let's grow together. Let's get through this hard stuff. And don't hesitate to share things because, guys, you know, we can all learn from each other. I am not void from learning, and I love to learn, and I love to learn from you guys and share in this venture. I just, I, I have a voice, and I want to use it the right way. So, guys, I am going to hop off of here. Have a fantastic day. I encourage you to check out TreyerWilderness.com. We have some great posts coming out that I think you will enjoy. Uh, my podcasts are available every Friday, and our newsletter goes out every Sunday. So, guys, I enjoy you, love you all, praying for you, and I wish you a wonderful and blessed day. God bless.